Yeah, yeah, so what? It's your boy, Bits and Bobs. Good morning, everyone. This is another episode of Bits and Bobs Meets. Today it is Sir Jeff Palmer. Um, obviously, um, this, this gentleman is a pioneer, a leader um, for our community in Scotland. And um, for me, he's an uncle. He's a gentleman I've spent time with, our families I've spent time with, and I'm very happy for him and all his achievements. Um, so, Jeff, welcome. Thank you for coming on. How are Morning. you? I'm okay, and thanks for the the invite. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, so I'm going to call you Uncle Jeff because that's what I call no, you anyway. No. And if yeah. I was to see you on the street, you know that's how I'd hug you and say to you, "I'm for Jeff." So, Uncle Jeff, how have you been? How are you? <laughs> I'm I'm okay, you know. I've um, I, I, you know, as you know, I've been a bit little busy since March. I didn't plan it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 let let's talk about that. So what have you been up to um, since March? Well, I think you know what has started this. I was thinking of it this morning, and I thought, why am I doing all these Zoom meetings and Teams meetings and? why I'm on all these committees. And it's because um, somebody asked me in March, what about statues? Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, we shouldn't take them down. You know, if you, uh, the phrase I used, if you remove the evidence, you remove the deed. And, and therefore, uh, to me, it, uh, these statues are part of black history. 100%. 100%. I think that... And if we take them down, then in a hundred years' time, nobody will know what Mr. Colston did in Bristol, mm -hmm. and they won't know what Mr. Dundas did in Edinburgh. Facts, factual. And mentally, how has that been for you? <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? Mentally? Um, yeah, mentally. How has that it's been It's interesting for you? that... Well, in terms of, um, you know, you mean the, 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 the work which has followed that statement? Yeah, yeah, because, you know, obviously um, what you are saying is that obviously we've got to keep them because it's all about black for our history, okay? So what I'm saying yeah. is mentally, how is that for you? How is that for when you are reliving what these people have done? How is that for you when you are having conversations with other people Right. To talk about how is that mentally for you, you know? That, that's very important in a sense that, um, you, you know, I speak to some people, both black and white people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and, and non-white in general, I, I would say. And it's interesting you've asked that because sometimes I have to convince non-white people that, you know, these statues should stay. Yeah. Um, and I remember speaking to a person and after I gave my explanation, mm -hmm. they actually said, you know, we hadn't seen it that way. Um, in a sense that if you take them down, your, somebody can say to your grandchildren, that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, what I'm saying as well is to put a plaque on them. Uh, 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 and put a plaque on it saying exactly what these people did. Mm -hmm. And and believe you me, it is harder to get a narrative on a plaque saying what um, uh, somebody did in slavery, you know, enslaved black people, African people. It is harder to get that on a plaque than to, than to say, don't take the statues down. Mm -hmm. because some people would rather have the statues down. True, true. And, and you know, I'm one of the people who wants the statues to stay because it is a part of our history. I want the statues to be there. I want a plaque to say, this is what this person done. You know? Yeah. Uh, whether it was positive or negative. You know, it's, uh, we're learning. Absolutely. We're absolutely. Learning. And, and you'd be surprised that the fighting I've had, you know, sort of, you know, I was on a committee for three years to talk about the narrative on the plaque for Henry Dundas in the middle of Edinburgh, and we got nowhere because half the committee was saying he was an abolitionist, he was a good guy. 
Mm -hmm. And I said he transported over 600,000 people because of his politics. And the point is that, it, you know, the, the, the chairman, this is the thing, one of the, the, the problems with a democracy, if it's 50-50 <laughs> voting, nothing happens. <laughs> and, and, and our committee was disbanded on the basis of that. And it was when the sad, you know, crucifixion, as I call it, of George Floyd. Yes. And the world saw that a black person was being killed over eight minutes. That is what's caused this change. That's why I'm talking to you today. It's because people have not had that history. Mm. They've not seen it. And what they were seeing over eight minutes was in fact the persecution and the attitude of a white person to a black person. And that changed the world. You know, we've had other killings before and yeah. sad events, but we witnessed that. And what I'm saying is that the, 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 the problems I've had is, is people are saying, for example, you know, another little fight is, oh, but we had slaves in Britain as well. So what's the big deal about slavery in the Caribbean? Hmm. And, what a question. And, and, this is, <laughs> and this is not just from white people. Wow. And therefore, the point is that because we don't know the history very well, that why anybody would try and compare a servant in servitude in Britain working in a mine with a, 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 a black person taken from Africa, knowing where they were going, don't see their families again, ever, and at a lifespan of less than 10 years. And you had to have an abolition process because it was legal. Mm. And compare that with servitude called a slave. And I'm not saying that all evils are wrong. All slaveries are wrong, but they must not be compared because what people are doing, whether it's plaques or whether it's talking about slavery, they are trying to balance. We had slaves and you were slaves. So yeah. what's the big deal? Yeah, that, that's that's um, that's it's, it's quite wrong and, and very um, silly to compare because, you know, <laughs> I mean, what you're saying there is just you can't compare full stop, you know, you shouldn't compare full stop, especially with the experiences and so on. Regarding that, Uncle Jeff, I mean, mm -hmm. when you come against stuff like that, you know, mm -hmm. does, does such statements make you go insane or does such statements <laughs> make, motivate you to be like, I'm going, because of this energy, because of what you're saying, that's what motivates you to keep going, to keep teaching? You, you, you put your finger on it. In fact, I get up each morning, you know, and I'm saying, I'm 80, I'll be 81 in April. <laughs> you look good, Uncle. You look good. You look yeah. good. <laughs> and, and I've had a relative in London who's saying to me, oh, you know, why are you killing yourself? Why are you doing that? And the point is, I say to, to relatives or non-relatives, if you can do it for me, I'll stop. <laughs> I said I, I don't I don't mind giving it up if you would do it for me because what we need you know the battle is you have a historian who knows you don't know the history mm -hmm. both sides they do and the point is they can manipulate the argument and the point is that if 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 you don't have somebody saying when somebody says to me, Henry Dundas was a good guy, I said he was going to breed slaves. Yes. He ordered the purchase of slaves. What sort of abolitionist is that? Therefore, they can't respond to that. And that negates their argument. And that's why we now have a debate and why, in fact, 
we have a case. Mm -hmm. The point is that you've got to be able to challenge the nonsense like we had slaves too, because there's a completely different um, situation. But I've seen that used many times and still being used to stop us gaining a say as to how the situation should change. Mm. And believe you me, it, as you said earlier, God, that's, that's silly. <laughs> because when you, say, when you state it, it, it is. 100%. But that, uh, that argument has been used because you've then got to say why it's silly. And, and you know, that, that's why, because the, the conversation, I won't say arguments, the conversations I have, when I'm talking about it, I say to them, you know, um, where would you, um, people say, oh, where would you, if I took your siblings and your mother and your father and all your family members and slaved them, where would you put my statue up? That's what people say to me. And I say to them, okay, fair enough. However, I'd still want to know what you've done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would still want to know what you've done. And, you know, that's history, isn't it? How do we learn by history? Because it's, it's written, it's in statutes, it's in plaques, it's, it's there. So we can all learn from it. I mean, we can read the same sentence and maybe take mm -hmm. two different outcomes. But the fact is... The, the information on these plaques, information on these statues, is factual, and we have to identify what they've done. And I'm I'm 100% behind you. You know, I call you my mentor, and I think you know what I see you've been doing and are currently doing for me. It just motivates me even more. Um, I always say that um, pioneers like yourself has paved the way for a gentleman like me to be able to be confident, comfortable to speak out. On, on racism, slavery, because you know one thing I learned, Uncle, when you have an argument or a conversation and you hit someone, someone hits you with their opinion, then you then reply with facts. It's no mm. longer a conversation, is it? <laughs> You're absolutely right in a sense that a lot of the debates and arguments and stuff I've been having on Twitter, and I do the Twitter thing because you know, it, it is reaching an audience mm -hmm. um, which doesn't, that audience does, doesn't have to go to a textbook or a research paper, which nobody will read, <laughs> or, you know, six people read it. We are saying things daily. And the point is that I, 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 I didn't know anything about Twitter, but it has been significant in informing people yeah and it's, it's some of the debates i've had on it where and one of the tricks which i've learned and that's why i engage in these arguments because i'm learning mm -hmm. how the racist thinks <laughs> and how they respond so if they were smart they should stop <laughs> <laughs> if i were a racist i would stop writing stuff mm because it has taught me and for example one thing i've learned was if i put forward evidence which is written which is original source evidence somebody who is attacking me will say um, i you know i've put up evidence and you haven't the point is that i've put it up mm -hmm. But somebody who could just say, you haven't put up any evidence when it's there. And that I've put up evidence when they put nothing up. And they keep saying that. And the point is that that to me is, is frightening. Because what it is, is that they are trying to use the old trick that what a black person says. Yes. Has no validity. That's a culture itself, though, isn't it? Well, it's what we call, you could call it systemic racism. Yes. It's where, in fact, what you're saying and I'm saying 
has no validity. And I'm talking about even my scientific work, mm -hmm. which, you know, has influenced the way people now think all over the world. Mm. It, it, the, the point is with that, is that, you know, my work was being used in industry to produce, you know, um, products, but still in the scientific literature. The people are saying, well, it works, but it doesn't work the way he says it works. Yes, and, 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 and you know, that's, 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 that's an opinion, isn't it? You know, it's someone's opinion, but like, like I said, you know, with the facts and stuff, it shouldn't really, but we're always going to get internet trolls, you know, and- uh, Oh, this is not internet, this is not internet troll. Oh, no, 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 this, this is, is scientific no, research. Yeah, this is scientific research papers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying to you. So what I'm saying to you, like with the research papers, um, no matter what you put out, there's still going to be someone who doesn't agree with you or who doesn't validate, think what you're saying is valid, regardless of the information you provide. And well, it shouldn't be. <laughs> I, well, yes, I know. I agree with you, Uncle Jeff, but <laughs> today's society, you know, would reply completely different. And that's what I want to ask you. Being obviously a young um, black gentleman in, uh, in Scotland and in the world today, how do you reflect on it? You know, what do you think of society? I mean, I, I have to ask, do you think anything's changed? I think we, believe you me, I think over the I've seen, and I've been, in Britain since 1955. Yep, you're a young man. A young, young, yeah, as a young man, 1955. And I've seen a greater change over the last, since March, than I've seen from 1955 to March. In, in terms of people listening, uh, people actually, um, uh, uh, w w wanting to know the truth about our history. And that's very key what you said there, Uncle Jeff, the truth. You yeah. Know, um, and it's very, it's, very, it's very adamant that since 1955, you think you've seen more change since, since March. And that is, is very scary and quite alarming because it's taken, God forget, uh, may rest in peace, uh, uh, a human being dying Mm -hmm. on 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 our screens let's be honest you know everyone, yeah, yeah. everyone saw it for everyone to then for the powers that be to take notice to be to acknowledge you know that change must happen and that's scary for me you know yeah. uh, <laughs> that's why i work yeah <laughs> and, and you know and like you know listen and that's what triggered me to do what i'm doing you know and um i think i think um with what you're doing i mean when you say you've seen more change how does that make you feel now that you've seen this change since march it has made me it has motivated me even um you know as i said you know uh, sometimes when i uh, i'm not working i sit and i i read and i do things and i you know go into the supermarket but the fact is now I go into the super, my local supermarket and I have people coming up to me, white people, and are saying we've seen the program on TV and, you know, it, it, it has changed our attitudes. We thought that, but now we thought that, and the last person I met was only a couple of days ago and he was a very colonial looking white person mm -hmm. he was immaculately dressed and whatever and he came up to me and he said i'm born in the congo this is my village in Pennycook." <laughs> he said I, I was born in the congo and i am of a very strong colonial background and he said since i all this which is going on i find it abhorrent that's his word that somebody could be persecuted because of the color of their skin that's in a supermarket now nobody has said that to me since 1955 anywhere wow 
and, and therefore the work which is not just me are loads of people now are working you know white and black are working and the fact is that it, it, the attitudes are changing and because what they saw on that screen with George Floyd was David Hume, the philosopher, mm. who said, you know, in 1753, in his view, Negroes are inferior to whites. <laughs> and that has gone into the psyche mm. of how we've lived. And the point is that when I was talking earlier about people who won't listen to us or whatever, is because Hume said when they told him that there was a black person who, had, who was quite able, he said that person was a parrot. Because what he's saying, we are not capable yeah. of original thinking. We don't have the intellect. So we're imitating. The point is that it has gone into our educational system, it's gone into our culture, and it's been passed on. And people say, well, I'm not prejudiced, I'm not whatever, but a politician in the 60s, he won his seat by just saying, how would you like your little blonde daughter to come home with a big black guy? And that was in the 60s. Hmm. The point is that he was playing on the prejudices Yes. of the negative aspects of black men. Mm -hmm. And therefore, these are the prejudices we've got to try and get rid of. This sort of subconscious, and it's fascinating. It's the first time I'm saying this now in the media because the, the, the decision was only made a couple of days ago where the British government said they're not going to use unconscious bias anymore. <laughs> right, that, in the news. The point is that what we, you know, what I said too in 2018, you know, I was asked to give a talk and I said at the talk and it was in Glasgow, I said, there is no such thing as unconscious bias. They cannot be <laughs> because how do you know it's unconscious? <laughs> <laughs> Believe you me, the government used it, big companies used it. Um, people have talked about it, and what it was, whomever devised it, it probably came from America, what it is saying, when somebody is prejudicial or racial, we've given them an excuse. Yes. It was unconscious. I didn't mean it. And therefore, that's how important we looking at things people all sorts of um, educational capacities look at what is being said so that it can be challenged before it becomes general practice and that the government is now saying just a couple of days or so ago they're going to stop it because it is of no use that's where we are in the society we live in. That somehow something like that could have gone into practice when it is not valid. One simple question would tell you that. If I did something and I said, oh, it was unconscious, how do you know I'm telling the truth? Truth or not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's... it's, it's uh, <laughs> So you've got that for the first time. <laughs> we say, I'm going to say it again and again, but you've got the, my first response um, to, 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 to that. And that to me is a perfect example of why we have to be very careful still of what people put into practice about us. It's, 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 a, it's quite damning, isn't it? Um, you know, um, it's, 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 it's mental. It's, 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 it, we, we laugh about it because, I mean, you can't cry, can you? No, no. <laughs> we, 
you have to chuckle. Things which are awful um, are so ridiculous that we, we have to laugh. Um, because how did anybody at government level do that? With all the advisors and the, and the expertise and, the, and, and therefore to me, it, it, you know, somebody said, well, how could people enslave, you know, black people? How could they put unconscious bias into practice? It's because somebody decides that's what they're going to do. Yeah. And then they make up a story. You know, it, 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 it's what they used to call teleology. Mm. You know, black people come from the sunny country. <laughs> they're used to it. White people don't come from a sunny country. They're not used to the sun. Black people are better better slaves than white people in the Caribbean. Believe you me, mm. it was as simple and nonsensical as that. Let's, um, let's segue into some positive stuff. <laughs> <laughs> But that, that is positive. No, it, it is, is, is just... Extremely positive because we've changed. We have changed. No, we have Unconscious bias. Unconscious bias. Hmm. That's one of the most positive changes we've had. 100%. So it's not, not negative. No, no. When I say positive, I mean, it, it's just a, a damning thought, isn't it? That for so long, things have been happening and now the change. But then again, no. the saying goes that better late than never, I suppose. Of but course. Your, your grandchildren will benefit. Well, there you go. And your that, children. That's, that's the aim. Um, relatively, um, you've got a new role um, mm -hmm. um, in the, in, with the City of Edinburgh Council. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you just shed some light on what you're going to be doing? And what's the... I believe it's the... The slavery, um, please, please help me here. It's legacies and with street names, um, statues and, 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 and buildings. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have been asked to look at that. And the council, the people who are listening, uh, the council has published a sort of um, information on this. Yes. You know, um, they, they have done that. So, you know, anybody wants to see it to just look up Edinburgh. I'm not good on all this technology stuff, but <laughs> if they look up the council's website, <laughs> um, they will find that. And so I've been asked to chair that, and that has been announced. Yes. And yeah, we're going to look at, we're going to look at um, street names, statues, and buildings. And what we're going to do is to try and will feed back to the council, or I'm on another committee that's dealing with galleries and, and museums. And all of that, I hope, will provide information mm -hmm. about our history that will, in fact, um, educate not only children, but adults. And, and that's, that's where I am at with that last sentence, not only educate children, but adults. Um, yeah. Because, funny, um, funny could enough, you, it, 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 could you, it, it, because somebody is banging at my door. Well, why? Right, that's fine. Go, 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 go. Okay, cheers. Okay. 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 So yeah, so um, when you say about um, changing, um, educating, and changing, uh, educating adults and as well as children. Mm -hmm. I think um, I'm in a similar position just because, you know, I'm the leader of the BAME network, okay? I am the first black leader of the city of Edinburgh mm -hmm. Council ever. And, excuse me, we are, I am necessary teaching people stuff. You know, teaching other right. colleagues, um, teach people that are older than me or younger than me or same age as me about racism. I'm encouraging people of ethnicity to come forward, tell their stories, their experiences, their livelihood, you know, um, and all the experiences about working within the council and Edinburgh society. And 
it has been, you know, probably a, one of the most positive whirlwinds ever since the summer, to be honest, since June. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, 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 a, it's the inclusion of it as well, you know, of the white people, um, Asian people, blacks, um, Eastern mm-hmm. European, that everyone working under this organization actually has the same ambition, the same quest mm-hmm. to be all to be treated equally. And that's like gender, sexual identity, disability, religion, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And every day I'm learning because I do encounter people who don't agree with me. So I try and understand why they don't agree with me. And then mm-hmm. what my approach, Uncle Jeff, is different because my personality is just like, I just, I'm always positive. Um, I'm always happy. I try and, you know, understand stuff and then I explain. And I think because I'm not militant or combative, I think that's why it's mainly received warmly. Um, obviously, <laughs> I could just pick up um, my screen and type in so Jeff Palmer and just listen to the way you talk and then just try and copy you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, you know, <laughs> I just think, Uncle Jeff, right? I just think Mm -hmm. that the arguing has to stop, okay? The heated moments has to stop. You know, there are people out there who want to actually help. And I think it's very important we have to realize that because in uh, one man, you know, individually can't do everything. You need a team and you need to be inclusive. You know, this is a very massive word we use in the council. We need to be inclusive. Mm -hmm. And inclusive, there's two words, letters there. It goes U.S. and it goes us. It's a team. <laughs> and um, you like how I've done that? <laughs> yeah. I'm like... <laughs> I, I just think that, you know, it, it, it has been a massive positive change and in what we're doing. And, like, so many people are coming forward. So many people want to help and contribute. And it, it's crazy to think that George Floyd was the sacrifice or the 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 trigger for everyone to be like enough is enough Mm -hmm. from from all communities and mentally for me it's um it's tough as well as um i thrive on stress don't get me wrong i thrive on all of this and it's just tough though isn't it because i think back to when i was growing up in scotland and I think about what I went through and I think, wow, you know, I wouldn't wish that on anyone, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it, the, 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 the annoying part is that unfortunately it still happens today. And I know I've asked you about, obviously like you've seen more change and stuff. Um, going forward, how do we maintain this, um, this energy? How do we maintain this, this force of, you know, this positive change? I mean, Teach me because, like, um, every day I'm learning, and I, I know I have the energy, and I have the amazing people around me in my network and my colleagues as well. And you know, mm-hmm. great people like Adam McVeigh, um, Cami Day, and so on. You know, they are there to help me. But I mean, is there anything you could say to me, or you would advise me? Well, Daryl, <laughs> it's interesting that that you should say that because it fits perfectly. <laughs> what I'm going to say and this is not planned you said it and I'm just going to pick that up mm. and this is the I, uh, there are certain aspects you know about science in that um, I, in, in, I, I did a little book on science called Serial Science and Technology mm-hmm. and at the strap line I put in it and this is 1989 and I said technology is science that works so when something works, the science is right. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't work, then something about its fundamental principle of operation mm. is wrong, whether you like it or not, or I like it. And what you've just said, it's interesting because you ended with, you know, um, um, McVeigh and, and Day. The point is that they are the people who are involved in driving forward this work, 
which I've been asked to chair, um, about statues, streets, and other memorials, um, which are linked to, to um, slavery. And therefore, you know, what can you do? The point is it's being done. Mm. And what we've got to do is to respond to that. It is being done. Somebody as, um, um, from the council has asked. The council has been criticized by significant historians. Um, uh, they've linked me to the criticism, but criticizing me is no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to it. <laughs> but I object to the criticism of the council. Mm -hmm. Why I object is not because, you know, I, I, I support the council in that sense. I object because they have no evidence on which to base their criticism. To refer to the council as, as has been in the newspaper, one historian says, oh, the decision was like a kangaroo court. So this is general knowledge. I'm not talking out of turn, you yeah, know. Yeah, or, yeah, I know. I get you. I get this you. was in the newspapers. And I say that is wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, because it is, it is um, playing on prejudices. You know, I'm black. The council is said to be listening to me. Therefore, in fact, something must be wrong with the decision. This is where we started. Mm -hmm. You know, that if something isn't white, and I've been, been described as, um, because this is about history, my then, exactly like you, where I'm now being described, not as somebody who knows something about history, I'm described as a chemist. <laughs> I'm described as a brewer. <laughs> I'm described as, you know, um, somebody who doesn't know anything about history. <laughs> yeah. But, but that is very serious because these people in, today in newspapers are saying, don't listen to him because he's not in our field. Mm. The point is that they forgot to, to tell the public that I've got probably the, one of the highest research degrees. Yeah, they won't mention that. I, they, no, I'm a doctor of science, mm. which is a research degree, which I don't think they have. <laughs> <laughs> That's the irony. So I have a capacity to do research. Mm -hmm. And I've been given, uh, you know, a qualification in it. And that is where we still are. Yes. You know, and, and, and that for the future, your qualifications, your ability, your potential must be recognized. Other peoples as well, no matter what race or class they come from. Mm -hmm. their capacity, their potential. And if in fact you have the potential, that potential should be um, trained, should be taught to fit the position. And what I've got an example where I did some work with the NHS and there were probably when we started only about four managers Okay, four. Mm -hmm. And when we set up a course to deal with that, to improve or increase more managers, that's what the course was designed for. I think within two, two three years, mm -hmm. it's over 20. <laughs> so it's nothing to do with color genetics or anything. Mm -hmm. It's, the, it's to do with a lack of attention. And therefore, my hope for the future is that the system will develop strategies and people who've contacted me, lots of people, schools, institutions, have contacted me and we've talked about that. And what I'm saying to you is what I've said to them. Mm -hmm.
that you develop because if you have, for example, an equality program, it, it can't be just one person. No, because it's not. It's got to be. It's not equal. No, no, but what I meant, if they have an equality person who is going oh. to look after the equality strategy. Okay. <laughs> that's what I'm, you know, it's got to be some sort of a strategy or policy in which we can see possible outcomes. It, it mustn't just be, yes, we've got the equality policy, we've got an equality officer, end of story. Yeah. You, you see what I mean? 100%, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and therefore, these are all the things I hope for the future. And, 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 and what I want is a lot more non-white people to be represented through our society in senior positions. Mm -hmm. And that will become a part of the, you know, the, the knowledge base of our system. Mm -hmm. So when you are seen on the street, or me, I, I don't immediately judge a white person that they can't be a manager, mm -hmm. or they're not a manager. I wait and they, till they t tell me what they are. Mm -hmm. I don't assume. It's dangerous to do that. <laughs> I don't prejudge. But you see, a lot of black people are judged yes. as not having that capacity. And the story which I've told before, I'll tell it again, just to explain that. Please. Yeah. You know, last year I went to the festival to give a talk and when I arrived, the, the, the attendant said, you know, can I help you? And I said, um, yeah, I said, I've come to give a talk. And she said, well, what time? I said, two o'clock. And she said, two o'clock? You can't be giving that talk. That talk is being given by Professor Sajet Palmer. <laughs> what what was the um, the um, the conclusion of that incident then? <laughs> I have I dare ask. <laughs> the conclusion I just stood there. And I thought, you see now the difference is, I know who I am. Mm -hmm. So I just stood there because between you and I, if they didn't sort this out, I'd go home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the, the, the person running the event saw the discussion and came down and, and, and realized what had happened or what was being said. Mm and just said, oh, please, Jeff, could you come in? <laughs> and the young lady looked terribly embarrassed. But you see, I don't blame her. I blame the system because she is not aware that, you know, black people have that capacity. Black, people's, black people can be leaders. Black people can be professors. Yeah, and it's not her fault. Anything. Because the way she's been educated, her culture, our culture has told her that. Yeah. And, 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 and it's not just one incident. The other one is where I went to an institution in Edinburgh and I, I wanted to get into a building and the, the guy said, do you know anybody in there? And I said, this is the, the, the porter. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I used to know the previous boss. And he said, the previous boss? Were you a chauffeur? Wow. Wow. So again, you know, and this is not 1940. Mm. This is 2019. Wow. And, and therefore, we therefore must get people. If we're a diverse society, we need diverse management. 100%. Or to be, or to be inefficient society. And therefore, my hope for the future is that we could, we're going to have more diverse management. And, and therefore, our society will be a lot more efficient. And therefore, um, you know, this is what we're working for. We're changing attitudes. We are showing how um, nonsensical 
the, it is to think that without any evidence that one race is superior to the other. Amen to that. Amen to that. And, you know, that's what, believe it or not, that's what I'm trying to incorporate in the council. You know, I'm trying to, to establish relationships with HR, comms, um, the right departments and, and, you know, ask them, you know, we need representation in the positions because if you look at the representation of the council, you see um, no representation at all. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's not, no, no, I mean, I know a few, I know one or two um, people in certain positions, but there's no, no representation in senior levels executive level, heads level, um, and it's like, you know, why? You know, that, that's the question, why? And I always say, change their minds, you change their attitudes. And for yeah. me, it, it's, it's uh, uh, you can use that if you want as well, Uncle Jeff, in one of your talks going forward. <laughs> well, you know, the fact is, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that. <laughs> I, just, I just told you the story. <laughs> <laughs> there is, um, you know, a listening element. The, the point is, though, it it is it, it the, the system is now aware of it. Yes, and therefore we have to act constructively. Mm. And that's and you know that's it. And I, 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 you know, and, and that is is critical. Um, the fact is that it is not just about, as my mother would say, you know, um, in a, a old colonial way she says you know you should stop beating up your gums <laughs> without saying anything of, 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 of constructive mm. and what we've got to get is a constructive argument and 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 and, and that to me is, is 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 sort of critical and the argument is getting through you know if 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 if, if the young lady when she said, you know, that talk has been given by Professor Sir Sajev Palmer, the, 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 the confidence I had then, I know that I, I am Professor Sajev Palmer. Yeah. And that's what we want to give other people, the confidence to say, I am Jim Bloggs. Mm -hmm. And I am the director of so-and-so. So you don't have to be shouting it. And the point is that the system um, will treat you in that way, but the system cannot make a judgment at the moment because they haven't seen the examples. Mm. And therefore, talk to, the, talk to your bosses, talk to whatever, work with a, a strategy in terms of, just as I said with the NHS, the example I gave. Mm -hmm. If we don't have managers and if we don't have whatever, it's because we, we, we haven't got a strategy to bring them on. So that's what one should be talking about. And, 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 and on, on that, okay, we'll wrap up with um, what I'm going to ask you. When, um, when I told you, I was like, yeah, so Uncle Jeff, I'm, you know, the chair of the leader of the BAME network and so on. What was your initial right. thoughts of that? I think it. I thought good you know and therefore you have a responsibility um to um if you're approaching your bosses because you're a representative then the leader leadership is about looking at what the people you're leading need mm -hmm. and then discuss it with them and take that to the bosses and, and therefore, if you say we don't have sufficient managers or whatever, then how can we do that? Mm -hmm. We have people with the abilities and the capacities to be managers, but when they go to interview, they fail. Therefore, we've got to make sure when they go to interview, they don't fail. Yes. That's it. <laughs> it, it is it, it is not you know the point is if we are just you know saying this doesn't exist that's that's why this doesn't exist that's why that's not 
a strategy. No, no, we need, you know, I mean, as they always say, you know, well, for me personally, it's okay to give facts and obviously you can argue them with, you can't argue them with opinions. We need to be constructive, like you said, and also we need a strategy to, to, to help develop yeah. courage and then to Absolutely. succeed, isn't it? You know? Yeah. It's that, that simple. Cool. Believe you me, it is, uh, um, it's, a, it's a working model. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, if you set up means of, of you know, of, of if, for example, you know, when, when people, like people came to Britain, you know, we were walking around the streets in the 50s and, you know, the, the, the insurance companies thought black people were greater risks. Mm -hmm. yes. I don't know why. So we had to pay greater insurance. <laughs> and the irony is, so you have a black guy driving a bus, which is highly responsible job. Mm -hmm. And he has a driving license or whatever. But if he tries to get a, license, a driving license for his car, he was regarded as a greater risk than a white person when he was driving buses, highly skilled. Yeah. Those are the sort of prejudices which we had to change. And that's what I talked about earlier, thinking mm -hmm. that black people are not as capable. And therefore, we, without any training or teaching, we assume that's the same. Mm -hmm. Because it looks the same. And, and, yeah, no, no, hundred um, percent. Uncle Jeff, I, I love you. You know that. I appreciate you. Oh um, no, no, no! You're, um, you're, my, you're all my nephews. And, <laughs> and, and, uh, I, 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 do you know, like um, Reg, uh, Reggie Junior, Uncle Reggie's son. You know, yeah. um, he um, he asks of you as well, and you know. It's um it's crazy, you know. He 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 just turned um thirty two last mm -hmm. couple of weeks ago, and um, I told him I was like, oh, I'm gonna see Uncle Jeff, and he was like, <laughs> man, I need to phone him. I really need to phone him. I need to see how he's. <laughs> like, speak to his dad. Oh, his, his dad checks on me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know, yeah. To be honest, hey, I, Trump, okay. Yeah, I should be checking on both of you to be honest. So I've made it, you know, at least once a week. I'll check in on both. <laughs> You know, he just sent me a, a text or something. I say, "Oh, you're okay." Like, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. But, but is there no, you, you, you know, Reginald is is one of my students. Yes. So I knew Reginald before he brought the, his little children here, mm. and and Reginald worked hard, did research, and he's now working for you know big company. Yeah, yeah. And so you know, it is about addressing people's needs and that's all we, we have to try and do because it's not um it's not intelligence it's not the, the capacities it's just trying to ad identify the needs and then let's address them amen to that well could jeff i've been for the okay. last just under an hour i haven't been asking you questions before we wrap uh, up is there anything you'd like to ask me yes what um um you know how do you think you're going to um you know um you, you know meet your ambitions um good question um i personally think that it's going to be a lot of hard work um commitment and engaging with all parties um because you know, you said some. You said about constructive, uh, being constructive, and also strategy. Mm. I can't create the strategy on my own. No, <laughs> no. Um, I need, I need help. I need help from the people that, for example, have these interviews, or people that advertise these jobs. I need help from the powers that be. I need help from my network, my panel. Um, I'm, I'm going to do it by being. Um, working hard, being committed and asking questions and learning myself and and then putting it all into action because mm -hmm. um, yes, knowledge is power and knowledge is very product productive. I'm more than aware that I need other people to help me as well and I think asking for help, there's no embarrassment to that. I think... No. 
is very key because I think, um, you know, I always say this, individually we're strong, but together we're stronger. But I, I, I really do think that um, great things can happen when you have a team. And I think my team, my panel are amazing people. They come from a mix of Scottish, Pakistan, India, um, French. So my team are going to help me as well. But I just think the way I'm engaging with people, my personality and the way I um, approach things, is go it's going to help. And I think, you know, I think I am changing people's minds and changing people's attitudes because, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm on the team that's going to be helping to advise you <laughs> for the, the, the statues and stuff. Um, <laughs> I've, I've managed to convince people of joining a BAME network, the very first one, and I sit around my council. Mm -hmm. I'm establishing relationships with councillors, Adam, um, Cami, um, mm -hmm. different different um, Scottish parties and stuff, political parties, and that's all within six, seven months. <laughs> so, oh, that's, that's wonderful. So, you so know. yeah, I just think to keep doing what I'm doing, and um, it does help if you do it with a smile, <laughs> yeah, you're working for you're working you see what what um I, I have i don't know where i got it from but if i'm of a team or somebody asks me to do something then i'm committed to that yes um and i don't you know i'm not there to i'm there to achieve an objective i want an outcome and and i'm going to work towards that outcome and i hope to take people with me and if I need help, I ask for it. 100%. And that is the critical aspect. So if you think you need help to become a manager, then sit and discuss it with somebody, or the system sets up courses or trainings which embodies that need. Mm. So part of your job as leader is to say, now, what are, do, what are the, the factors that limit us from becoming leader, managers? Mm -hmm. What are they? And one has got to be sometimes brutally honest. You know, I'm not good at communicating because I wasn't educated. I come from a family that, that taught me that. Yeah. Or, you know, I need to understand structures. I've got to understand rules, you know, I've got to be on time, I've got to do this. And the point is that if you're a leader, you then say, what are the things that are limiting us from managers other than skin color or race? You know, mm -hmm. and get them instituted to help that change. You see the point I'm making? No, 100%. I'm agreeing with you, you know. Because that's the NHS story I've got. Mm -hmm. That we had the same people. And when that specific course was designed and set up, we went from four to over 20. <laughs> so... successful story. You see what I mean? So yeah. it, it's then... Um, where has the race element gone? Mm. So your job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> identify those needs and get them addressed. <laughs> amen to that, amen to that. And we're going to wrap up there. Um, okay. Thank you so much. Um, to the people you. that are watching, um, please make sure you like and subscribe. And thank you again, Uncle Jeff.